Hello viewers, you are welcome to Math with Michael Blair, hosting on Teach Connect. Today we shall be looking at a very important topic which is relevant to your mathematics understanding. And of course, it is no other topic than the Pythagoras theorem. It's a concept which you have heard several times, but I believe watching this video will make you understand it in a very different way and of course the best. So, what you need to know about the Pythagoras theory is that it is a theorem which is used to calculate for the sides of a right-angled triangle. The word is right-angled triangle. You need to understand every single part of that word because it is what we are going to be dealing with from starting to end. So let me throw more light on it. The right angle triangle has three sides, which make it, of course, a triangle. And the reason why we call it right is because it has a 90 degree angle. A 90 degree angle. Yes, and on my screen, I'm showing you pictures or examples of such right angle triangles which we are going to be looking at in our section today. In all the triangles, you can clearly observe that they all have three sides. And of course, there is a right angle triangle or there is a 90 degree angle in each of the triangles. First of all, how will you identify that 90 degree angle? Because remember that if the shape has three sides but lacks a 90 degree angle, it is not a right angle triangle. It is just a near triangle, a normal triangle we know. So, there are two ways of getting, of course, or knowing whether the angle is 90 degrees. The first way is by using a protractor. You can see it on the screen, the protractor. The protractor helps you to measure angles. But in situations where they are not drawn to scale, you are giving diagrams in examinations, in different situations, and those I mean, those drawings are just mere sketches. They are not drawn to scale. What are you going to do about it? Of course, you will see the perpendicular symbol. The perpendicular symbol. It is shown on your screen. This symbol is found at corners of some shapes to indicate a 90 degree angle. If you come across it in, of course, a triangle, you should know that that triangle is a right angled triangle. So, don't forget, let's look at triangle ABC, which is showing on our screen right now. You see that the angle at B, as we all expect, should be 90 degrees, right? Yes. But in this case, we are not sure whether it is 90 degrees. Because this drawing you are seeing here was not drawn to scale. And also, in addition, we have not seen the perpendicular symbol in triangle ABC. So you cannot just conclude that this is a right angled triangle. Let's pay very much attention. Sometimes you are giving questions which are not right angled triangles, but you end up going about it the wrong way because you fail to identify that without using a protractor or without seeing the perpendicular symbol, don't come to conclusion that it is a right angled triangle. So However, we move on to the main business for today, which is the Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras came across with a method which will help us find all the sides of a right angle triangle. And it's a very simple theorem. You can state it in your own way. You can make it your own. But don't forget the keywords of the definition and which I'm going to give you. So the Pythagoras theory states that Adding the square of the opposite and the adjacent results in the hypotenuse. Did you get that? Yes. Now, you'll be asking me, what is the meaning of opposite? What is the meaning of adjacent? What is the meaning of hypotenuse? Don't worry, I'll click on that soon. The hypotenuse is, of course, no other than the longest side of the right angle. You can see it indicated on your screen. Hmm. How about the adjacent and the opposite? The adjacent and the opposite are not in fixed positions, which means that they can change. Hmm? So depending on the kind of 
angle or the kinds of positions they will change they will change we don't have a permanent place for the adjacent and we don't also have a permanent place for the opposite so why do i say so let me explain it to you in this section so you see that it's or this right angle triangle has three angles when i say angle an angle is where sides meet if this side meets with this side then you should know that this is an angle if i meet one line here and i cross another line the joint here is an angle so if you look at the two triangles showing on your screen you will see that they have three angles out of which one is a right angle because we have seen the perpendicular sign by it now let's look at the other two angles it depends on the position of the angle we are looking for example in situation a we are looking at the topmost angle now when i say opposite opposite simply indicates opposing so if i'm on left and you are opposite me that means you're on my right if i'm on top and you're opposite me that means you are down when you look at that angle you can see that of course the side which has been indicated as opposite is standing downwards it or it is upwards and the adjacent is the other side which the angle slips on apart from the hypotenuse so apart from the hypotenuse you can see that the adjacent is serving as a foundation for the angle to stand on and that is why in this circumstance when we are considering the topmost angle we say that our bottom side is the opposite and of course the adjacent is what you are seeing there let's move on to the right side of the screen where we look at the downmost angle yes there is an angle which lies on the same part of the right angle and when you see it it has been circled in a red circle in such a circumstance it is on my right hand so the side which has been indicated as opposite is standing on the left side so you can see that the angle is on the right side and the opposite is on the left side so in that case we say that is our opposite but as i said the adjacent is the side which the angle slips on apart from the longest side and of course it is the adjacent which is indicated on your screen are you tired no don't be tired we have some few things to tackle now i want to state the theorem in a mathematical way you know this is mathematics and we have to do things in the accurate way so you can see it that hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared let me send you to some practical applications of this at least just an example to help you better you understand it so on our screen is indicated three sides three centimeters four centimeters and an unknown side so we are to find the length of the unknown side so as our theory states we cannot justify without our theorem the pythagoras theorem so the pythagoras theorem states that if i find the square of the hypotenuse it is equal to adding together the square of the opposite and the square of the adjacent so or the other two sides so in our circumstance three squared plus four squared should result in the square of the unknown side three squared means three times three which gives us nine and four squared means four times four which gives us 16 and don't forget it is equal to the unknown squared so 16 plus 9 is giving us 25 and 25 is equal to unknown squared so you are not asked to find the square of the unknown side you are asked to find the unknown side so in order to get rid of the square symbol you have to find the square root in order to get rid of the square symbol you have to find the square root of both sides so the square root of 25 and the square root of the unknown side squared and of course square root of 25 this has 5 and the square will cancel the square root because don't forget a square root means power 1 over 2 
If you've not heard it before, can you jot it down? Square roots mean power 1 over 2. So if exponent 2 meets with power 1 over 2, then I'm asking you for 2 halves. 2 halves. And of course, it will give me 1. And unknown power 1 is the same as unknown. So our unknown side is 5 centimeters. Don't forget to attach the units. It's been Michael Blair linking you live on Teach Connect. Try and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so that anytime you release a video, you'll be the first to get it. And don't forget to like and share your comments in the comments box below. It's Michael Blair once again. Thank you. Bye.